with the latest development in Niger Republic. African leaders, ECOMAS, are really ready for peace without the use of machine guns to restore peace in Niger Republic. The external influence that are destroying African continent must stop now for the sake of African unity. We don't want war. We want peace in Africa. As you are aware, the ECOWAS heads of state have made me an envoy to Niger Republic and we over the weekend we were there to see the military people and discuss to find the way out of the lacuna we find ourselves. So that's why I'm here this uh, afternoon together with the president of the ECOWAS Commission to give a report back to Mr. President on our discussion uh, uh, in Niger. I must say that the, our visit to Niger has been very fruitful in that, that it just opened an avenue to start talking and hopefully um, we will get somewhere. Situation, well, like I said, we, we started talking. They have, we made their own uh, points and then I made my report to the chairman of the Ecos Heads of State and President. He will now consult with his uh, colleagues and then the, the ding dong starts and we'll get somewhere, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully diplomacy will, 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 will see the better of this thing. Nobody wants to go to war. It doesn't uh, pay anybody. But then again, you know, the, uh, our leaders have said, if all fails, and I don't think all will fail, we'll get somewhere, we'll get out of this mess. If only a cause had become prisoners of history, they would have acted differently. A prisoner of history is that person who learns lessons from history. If only they recall what happened in Iraq, what happened in Bosnia Herzegovina, what happened in Somalia, what happened in Libya, in Afghanistan, and the devastating effect of interference into the internal affairs of a country, they would have acted differently. Rather than being prisoners of history, <coughs> They opted to become prisoners of geography, where they feel they can look at a map, dissect that map, and cherry pick. Echo was cherry picked and made Niger Republic a victim. Rather than looking at the other country, there are four or five other countries that are under military rule now. When they took over their countries, Echo was, was not in slumber, they were not sleeping. They were well alive and active. They looked away because there was no clear vested interest around to protect. But with Niger, America is visibly interested. With Niger, UK is an interested party. With Niger, they can split, they can split fire for them to protect America and the UK. And they are making the biggest mistake of their lives. Let Thursday come. Let Ecowas move their own troops to decimate, to obliterate, and to destroy Niger. And they think other countries are going to just fold their own arms. They will not fold their arms. They are going to fight back. And they are underrating the war in the manner a camel underrates scorpion. Ask anybody who knows the desert very well. <clears throat> the smallest insect that gives camel the biggest headache in life is the scorpion. The moment a camel sees a scorpion, it runs like hell because the scorpion kills the, 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 the camel in spite of the size. In this case, Niger is the scorpion, a course will be the camel. It will just be a matter of days and time. In international politics, you don't cherry pick what you want to destroy. You don't cherry pick. They are cherry picking on Niger. And it is an avoidable, an avoidable blunder. Here is a country, Nigeria, that has multitudinal, multidimensional, endless social, political, economic, and all other problems remaining unsolved, still counting. People are living in abject poverty. 
you don't even have any money to pay arrears, no money for infrastructure, no money for this, no money, and you think you have money to lead a war because other countries in ECOWAS don't have the money. Nigeria will fund this war, yes. and Nigeria doesn't have the capacity. Go to the Nigeria Republic, get the democracy of Nigerians that are stayed in, uh, in Nigeria Republic. There are houses, Yorubas, Igbos, Fulanis, Kanuris, Birams, Ganawuris. Every tribe in Nigeria has a representation in, in Nigeria Republic. Therefore, don't look at it as a, as, as a northern affair. It's not a northern affair. Maybe predominantly northerners are there, but there are so many other ethnic tribes of Nigeria extraction that are living in Nigeria, are believing in Nigeria. They have married there, they have invested there. Therefore, attacking Nigeria is not only attacking the north, it's attacking the entire Nigeria. Maybe that is another way of saying that uh, maybe Tinubu dreamt in the spirit of uh, Gideon Oka, who wanted to excise the entire north out of Nigeria. Let him decimate the entire north. And let's, let, let, let's see what he's going to get out. If he's not careful, he will lose more than a course. If he loses more than a course, he will lose Nigeria. There is no way he can go to a war in Nigeria involving more than 50 million people. And you think you can just look away, you go and sleep, and you sip some tea and feel comfortable and order a military escalation into Nigeria. Let him go ahead and do that. We are waiting for him to do I am very concerned about the happenings in Africa, especially West Africa. Yagot, of recent I have seen the ECOWAS introducing the anti d'etat unit. You know, poor coup d'etat, the power has stopped. They will form a big unit, you know, attack. We are not in support of coup d'etat. Let me make that very clear. And I want them to hear this. We are not support or in support of coup d'etat. I was a member of the Pan-African Parliament and have advocated strongly for us to introduce a term limit to make sure that we do away with coup d'etat in Africa, especially in West Africa. Yeah, yeah. So meaning, I am not in support of coup d'etat. But I have a concern. Before setting up a unit or anti-coup d'etat unit in Air Force, isn't it time that the African head of states or the ECOWAS head of states look into the reason why there are coup d'etats. What are the root causes of coup d'etats? Let them put their house in order first before they set up an anti-coup d'etat unit. Let them put their house in order. And I believe their house is not in order. This unit is set up to defend them and to protect them only, nobody else. What is more coup d'etat than your national constitution gives you two term limit, five years, two terms. After serving ten years, you want to change the constitution for another term. Is that not a coup d'etat? Because you feel you have the powers to do that. The soldiers have the powers to coup d'etat. That is also another coup d'etat. And they are living with them there. They are there. In the name of civilian, putting on multi clothes, calling yourself a Democrat, when you loot all the resources of your country, mislead people, torture them, imprison them, burn their businesses to us, and you call that a democracy? or a civilian rule and an illegally elected government. The leaders must stop lying to their electorate first. They must stop the corruption. They must stop looting our resources. 
They must understand that they are not a better citizen than anybody. They are given a responsibility, a role to play, to help develop the countries and make sure that there is peace and tranquility and respect the constitution of the country. But this is not happening. Example is this government. This government has lied to people in 2016 that they are going only for three years. Was that not a lie? Who asked them to tell people that we are going for three years? Were they forced to say that? They went around the whole country, lied to everyone. When the people started reminding them, this is what you promised us, they threw tear gas on them. And the president is bragging, yes, when I threw tear gas in them, they never came back. Does, not, does, does that not anger the citizens? You throw tear gas on your people. Some of them are wounded and you stand out there and bragging that I throw them a tear gas. They never come back. That alone can anger the citizens. You promise the people you will have a security sector reform. It's never happening. The civil service sector reform is never happening. The Jani Commission, Jani Commission was violated before the end of the Vice Commission. When you take all the assets of the former president, and now you are busy buying assets, your days are coming. I thought they should have learned, or they could have learned from this. Unfortunately, they are not learning. So before you create a unit to go against any item of coup d'etat, put your house in order, stop lying to your electorate, stop lying to your citizens, stop looting the resources of your country, stop corruption in your country. And then you can talk about anti-coup anti d'etat. When Alpha Conde was killing his people in Guinea, after serving 10 years, he said it was not enough. I want to serve another term. During the process, so many Guineans were killed. And I did not see how any echo was going there or condemning him. You know why? Because Guinea was too big for them, or Alpha was dancing to their tune. Because I think that was why the Sumon Gambia was surrounded all sides by soldiers and guns in 2016. Because Gambia was small, or Gambia is a small country, and Jamme was not dancing to their tune. After the presidential election in Guinea, more than 300 Guineans were butchered, killed. No echo was condemned him. No African Union condemned him. Instead, they pick up their phones and say, Musele President, felicitate you. Congratulations. That is the fair game that is happening in Africa. They can condemn Mali. They can condemn Guinea. They are soldiers. But the one in Chad, who has been given a red carpet for the African Union, was never condemned, and he's a soldier too. He's a soldier. They can give him a red carpet for the African Union. But the other soldiers are condemned for their attempt, or for their, for their act. Where is the fairness in ECOWAS, or in the African Union? They are not representing us. I believe they are representing themselves. So we are calling them to remember that power belongs to the people. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how he came into power with Babbo. He knows. But he finished his 10 year term. He changed the constitution for another term. They are there with him. Nobody condemns him. They are not there to condemn him because he's dancing to their tune. So I'm calling on Equus to do the right thing. We young Africans, we are here watching. And we fear nothing. I don't have to be a president to be a Gambian. I don't have to be a president to contribute my quota towards national development. But I'm a proud Gambian and a proud African.